Welcome. The most recent video I showed you was how you graph lines using a point on the line and the slope of the line. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to graph a line using its intercepts. And this is going to turn out to be most useful whenever you're graphing a line whose equation is written in a standard form. And so you could say that that's really what I'm teaching in this video is how to graph a line whose equation is written in standard form. All right, now you see two goals written here. First, that you're going to learn to find the intercepts of a given linear equation and use them to graph the line. And the second is that you're going to learn to graph vertical and horizontal lines. And since you truly use intercepts in order to do that, it fits right in line with the rest of what it is we're going to accomplish here. Let's get on to graphing. It says in the directions here that we're going to find the intercepts of the line with a given equation. And this equation right here is the one I'm referring to. And then we're going to sketch its graph. All right. Now, one thing that I mentioned in the intro is that I'm kind of teaching you, well, not kind of, I'm teaching you how to graph a line when its equation is written in standard form. Maybe not perfect standard form, but at least in this form right here, ax plus by is equal to c. Or in other words, when you have your x term and your y term on the same side of the equation and your constant term on the opposite side of the equation. Now, when I say I'm only sort of teaching in standard form, technically standard form A, B, and C have to be integers among other rules, and I'm not going to worry about that here. Just any time you have X and Y on the same side of the equation, constant on the opposite side, this is a method you can use to make its graph. And the first thing that you do when you're doing that is you go ahead and you find the X and the Y intercepts. So let's go ahead and find the X intercept for this graph first. Now, when you find intercepts, there's a really simple process that you go through, and I want to make sure you understand why we do what we do. Um, x-intercepts, of course, is going to be where a graph intersects, intersects the x-axis. And if you scan across points on the x-axis, they all have one thing in common, and that's that the y-coordinate for every point on the x-axis is zero, correct? We're not above or below the x-axis, so the y-coordinate is zero. And so if we want to take an equation and find where the x-intercept is, what we're going to be trying to do is find the value of x when y is equal to 0. And so you set y equal to 0 and then solve for x. That's the process for finding an x-intercept. So we'll take our equation here and we'll replace the y with 0. So we'll have, whoops. 4x minus 0 is equal to negative 4. 4x equals negative 4. And so x equals negative 1. And we just learned that when x is negative 1, that y is 0. So that's the ordered pair that kind of goes together. And that will be the first point that we graph whenever we're trying to make the graph of this equation. So negative 1, 0. There you go. Now, similarly, when you're trying to find the y-intercept of the graph of an equation, when you're looking for the y-intercept, you're looking for and the point where the graph is going to cross the y-axis, aren't you? And whenever you're looking at points on the y-axis, the x-coordinate is always going to be 0. And so to use the equation to figure out where the y-intercept is, we're going to set x equal to 0. And then we're going to solve for y. So when you're trying to find intercepts, you always set the opposite variable equal to 0 and then solve for the intercept that you're trying to find, essentially. Now that means going back to our original equation and replacing the x with 0. So making this 4 times 0 minus y equals negative 4, which of course gives us negative y equals negative 4. And so y is equal to positive 4. Now remember, y was 4 and x was 0, so now we're graphing the point 0, comma 4. So let's go ahead and do that then. Here we go. And all it takes, remember, is two points to make a line. And so now that we've got those two points, we can go ahead and draw the line through those two points. And there is our graph. All right, hopefully you graph straighter lines than I might have done right there, but you get the idea. All right, so whenever an equation is written in standard form, easiest way to graph it is to find the intercepts. 
and then to go ahead and draw the line through those two intercepts. Could you change this equation into slope intercept form and then graph? Of course, but this is actually a little bit faster. Once you get the hang of it, I don't think you'd want to bother changing this to slope intercept form. Let's try another. Now here you see an equation that's not technically written in slope intercept form because the a and the b are not integers. Nevertheless, the same principle is going to apply. We can find the x and y intercepts very easily just by setting the opposite variable equal to zero each time. Let's find the x intercept. We know for that we're going to let y equal zero. So we would have the equation one third x plus one half times zero is equal to one. And that would give us one third x equals one. And so of course x would equal three. And so when x was three, y was zero. That's the first point that we would graph for this particular line. And then for the y intercepts. We're of course going to let x equal zero. And it gets to the point when you've done this enough that you don't actually have to write the one third times zero part. You kind of get that if hey, if I plug in zero for this term, for this variable right here, that entire term is going to go away. And I'm just going to have, in this case, one half y is equal to one. And so y then would be equal to two. And we just said that when x is zero, y is two. So there's our y intercept. And we've got our line. A bit straighter this time. Hopefully I've redeemed myself a little bit there. Very simple, right? All right, now to make the graph of a vertical line. First thing I want to make sure that you know here when we're talking about graphs of vertical lines is what the equation of the graph of a vertical line is going to look like. The equation of a vertical line is always going to be able to be written in the form x is equal to k, where k is some constant value. All right, and so you see a couple of equations of vertical lines, x equals negative 2 and x equals 3. Now, truly, this is still standard form in a sense. You still got something that's kind of in the form ax plus by is equal to c. It's just that this term is gone away, the y term. And, well, that gives you a vertical line. And the reason why I point that out is we can still graph vertical lines using intercepts. You just have to realize what it is that you're being told. Now, whenever it tells you that x is equal to negative 2, you can make that the x-intercept for the graph. Now this won't be the entire graph. A lot of people when they see the equation x equals negative 2 just simply want to put a point right here at negative 2, 0 and say that they're done. No, we're graphing a vertical line and that point happens to just be the intercept for that line. Well, so not too hard to go a little bit further with that. All we got to do then is graph the vertical line that goes through that, to that point. Now, a little bit further meaning into why the equation is what it is, you already know that that point that we graphed was negative 2, 0. But if you were to pick any point on that line, say this point right here, the x-coordinate for that point is going to be negative 2 everywhere on this line. And so, that's why we call it the line x equals negative 2, is because every point on the line has x equal to negative 2 for its coordinate. All right, and then the line x equals 3, would be graphed simply by graphing 3, 0. x equals 3, that would be the x-intercept for the graph, and then draw the vertical line that goes through that point, like so. And you can see that every point on this line has 3 for its x-coordinate, and so that's why we call it x equals 3. All right, lastly, let's look at how you graph horizontal lines. Now, we said vertical lines, their equation always come in the form x equals a constant. Well, Horizontal lines, their equation always comes in the form y equals some kind of constant. And, as I was saying before, it's really an equation written in standard form. It's just that there is no x's in the equation. This term ends up being equal to zero, so to speak. All right, so we can graph horizontal lines by using their y-intercept, because really, that's kind of what this is telling me at the beginning, is that the y-intercept for this graph is negative 2, and I want... I want to draw the horizontal line that goes through that particular y-intercept. Well, here is the point 0, negative 2. Here is the horizontal line that goes through that point 
done. And like I was saying with the x equals lines, um, another reason why we consider this line is y equals negative 2 is every point on this line has negative 2 for a y coordinate. And we could do the same thing basically for y equals 3. We would graph it first by graphing its y-intercept of 3. Then just make the horizontal line that goes through there. Doesn't get much easier than that. You now know how to find the x and y-intercepts of a graph. And that specifically we we're using to find the graph of an equation that was written in standard form. And then to graph horizontal and vertical lines. Hope this has been useful for you. See you later.